Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're talking about conditional statements. Um, in this case, we're going to be focusing on the if-then statements and the different parts of them. A conditional statement is a statement in the form of if something, then something else. And in math terms, if P, then Q, in which the hypothesis, the if part, implies the conclusion or the then part. For example, if it's raining, then I should, be, should use an umbrella. If it's raining, then I should, then you should use an umbrella. If something, then something else, and the hypothesis should imply the conclusion. So let's look at the, the different parts again. Hypothesis in the conditional statement are the words between if and then. And the conclusion are the words after then. In an argument, a conclusion is the answer that is reached, but in a conditional statement, it's the words after then. Here's some examples. Conditional statement. If it is raining outside, then you should wear a rain hat. The hypothesis is the words in green here. It is raining outside. It is raining outside. The conclusion are the words after then, you should wear a rain hat. And that's pretty much the basics. So let's go ahead and find the parts. Um, I just made up silly sentences just to prove that it doesn't really matter necessarily what the hypothesis and conclusion are. We just want to get a basic idea. If I like flying, then I should buy a fast car. If I like chocolate, then I should eat, then I eat chocolate cake. These are two statements. We just want to find the part. So you can pause the recording or pause this video, try and find where the hypothesis and conclusion are in both of those statements. All right, here are the different parts. This is the hypothesis, I like flying. The conclusion, I should buy a fast car. Mm. I like chocolate, I eat chocolate cake. So hypothesis, conclusion, hypothesis, conclusion. It's very important that we're able to identify those parts because that's what we're going to be doing from now on. We're going to be taking those parts and, and sort of messing with them a little bit. First way that we're going to mess with them is called a converse statement. A converse statement is a statement that switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. So for example, the sentence I had before, if I like flying, then I should buy a fast car, I would turn it into, if I buy a fast car, then I like flying. It made very little sense before, now it's just ridiculous. All right, the converse of this one, if I like chocolate, then I eat chocolate cake, you turn around, if I eat chocolate cake, then I like chocolate. That one, it made sense in the first place, it made sense in the second. Um, the converse statement it doesn't always make sense and it <laughs> doesn't always prove to be true, but this is what it is. You take the hypothesis and the conclusion and you swap them. So first we need to get pretty good at identifying the hypothesis and conclusion. Then with the converse, we're going to flip them around. So let's practice. Here's a sentence. If the sun is shining, then you should wear sunscreen. What's the converse of that statement? I'll give you a second to think about that. What's the converse of this statement? Here's the converse where we flip the hypothesis and the conclusion. If I should wear sunscreen, then it is rain, then the sun is shining. All right, so we've basically switched the conclusion with the hypothesis for our converse statement. Let's try one more. If a woman plays in soccer's women's cup, then she is an athlete. There's a picture of Mia Hamm. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. I haven't identified the hypothesis or conclusion for you, but I'd like for you to try it. Try and find the converse of that statement. All right, did you say something like, if a woman is an athlete, then she plays in the World Cup? If that's what you said, then that is correct. That is the converse statement. It doesn't make much sense. A, a woman could be an athlete and play baseball or, or hockey or whatever. You know, she doesn't necessarily have to play in the World Cup. So like it says there, the converse is not always true. Um, here's another example of a converse statement that's not true. If a dog is old, then you can teach him new tricks. The converse is, if you can teach a dog new tricks, then he is old. 
Again, doesn't make sense. It's not a valid argument or conditional statement at all. Not a conditional statement, but or not a true valid conditional statement. However, it is the converse, which is what we're looking for. All right. The next way of switching around sentences, and we are going to go through several of them, so if you're watching this, you can kind of pause if, if I'm going too quickly. But the other way we can flip things around or change things is called an inverse statement. The inverse statement takes a conditional statement that negates both the hypothesis and conclusion. So basically you're saying this, if not the hypothesis, then not the conclusion. Let's look at it. If a figure is a rectangle, then it has four right angles. That's a conditional statement. If we are going to negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion, it would look like this. If a figure is not a rectangle, then it does not have four right angles. Okay. Again, an inverse, it can or might, may or may not be true. However, um, the inverse statement is going to have not, basically we are negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Let's practice it. If a football player scores a touchdown, then the player's team earns six points. Go ahead and give that one a shot. Did you come up with, if a football player does not score a touchdown, then the player's team does not earn six points? That's what you should have gotten for that. That's how we make a statement into its inverse. We negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. All right, the, the last kind we're going to talk about here, so we talked about conditional statements, and I'll do a review at the end, but conditional statements, then we made the converse, the inverse, and now we're going to talk about the contrapositive. Um, the contrapositive is a conditional statement. It both switches and negates the hypothesis and the conclusion. So you end up with a statement that says, if not conclusion, then not hypothesis. And you'll notice near the end of this lesson that I haven't color-coded them as much because by this point of practicing and looking through things, we should be getting pretty good at pointing out what is the hypothesis, what is the conclusion, um, without me color-coding them for you. But it's sometimes nice to see colors. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's our statement. If a figure is a square, then it is a rhombus. To find the contrapositive, we have to switch them and negate them. If a figure is not a rhombus, then it is not a square. So you would have taken this rhombus part, that was the conclusion, put it into the hypothesis position, then we negated it. We took a hypothesis, put it into this conclusion, and negated that. So the negative conclusion in the beginning and the negative hypothesis at the end. All right. Let's try it. If you live in Delaware, then you do not pay sales tax. Go ahead and try and come up with the contrapositive to that statement. All right. Did you come up with something like, if you, you pay sales tax, then you do not live in Delaware? If you pay sales tax, then you do not live in Delaware. That is the contrapositive of this statement. We've negated the not from paying the sales taxes and made this, you live in Delaware, you do not live in Delaware. All right, so we have to swap both of them. So if you do pay sales tax, then you do not live in Delaware. The neat thing about contrapositives, um, and we'll talk about it in a second, is if the statement is true, then the contrapositive is also true. Although it, is a little bit confusing sometimes with all the knots and, and things like that, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So let's just do a quick recap of everything. A conditional statement says, if hypothesis, then conclusion. If a student is in geometry, then he's good in math. The converse statement is when you switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. If a, if conclusion, then hypothesis. If a student's good at math, then he's taking geometry. Again, not always true. The inverse. If a student is not taking geometry, then he is not good at math. Also, the inverse is not necessarily true. 
but it just negates the hypothesis and negates the conclusion. And then the contrapositive. If a student is not good at math, then he is not taking geometry. So if the conditional statement is true, the contrapositive is also true. Um, and that's the law of contrapositive. We'll look at that. But there's just a quick recap with the colors beckoning in. All right, law of contrapositives. A conditional statement is true if the uh, contrapositive is true. So let's try that with one question. We'll look at this one, and then you can think about it with the other contrapositive examples that we gave, including the Delaware and the student with the geometry. You can see that that is true. Let's go ahead and look at this. If it lives in the ocean, then it is a fish. So the contrapositive would be, if it is not a fish, then it does not live in the ocean. Can we think of a time when that is not necessarily true? Right, these two statements aren't a valid argument, but both statements are false because with the contrapositive, if the conditional statement is true, the contrapositive statement would also be true. It would sort of show that they are true. But in this case, it's absolutely not true. You could be a turtle and live in the ocean. If it lives in the ocean, then it is a fish. Not necessarily. It could be a squid or an orca, which is a mammal, and um, a crab. Right? You could be all sorts of different things other than a fish and living in the ocean. All right. So again, lots to cover over in this lesson. Hopefully, it's been helpful. Make sure your arguments are all kinds of valid. Have a wonderful day.